Hi, I'm Zach. I'm Ben. I'm Sean. And this is the history of interferometry. The dawn of interferometry started in 1801 when Young used his double slit experiment to demonstrate the wave particle duality of light. The idea of light interference led to Fizeau creating an interferometer in 1851 to test the theory of the drag on electromagnetic waves caused by the movement of the media through which the wave is propagating. With the seemingly positive results of the Fizeau experiment, through the years of 1881 to 1887, Albert Michelson and Edward Morley created the Michelson interferometer to test the existence of ether, a medium through which electromagnetic waves propagate to obtain their wave-like characteristics. After two test iterations and months of data collection, the expected fringe shift was not seen and thus the theory of the existence of ether wind was rejected. Throughout the rest of the 19th century, the Mach Zender and the Fabry Perot interferometers were developed. In 1916, the Twyman Green interferometer, essentially a modified Michelson interferometer, was used as the trailblazer for modern optical component testing. Following the invention of the laser in the early 60s, interferograms were used to create 3D holographic images. This led to 1964, where Dr. Jim Wyant saw a hologram of a stapler which convinced him to study the field of interferometry. Look at him now. <laughs> In the late 1970s to early 1980s, interferometry was used for the testing of the optical components of the Hubble Space Telescope. Some of the resulting interferograms can be seen hanging in the fourth floor hallway of OSC. Just last year, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory used what is essentially the most sensitive Michelson interferometer ever made to detect gravitational waves from black holes merging over a billion light years away from the Earth on two occasions. In more recent times, the biggest changes in interferometry haven't been made in the science itself, but the technology used to carry out the science is faster and more precisely, allowing for its use in all sorts of fields for testing and manufacturing. No matter how the interferometer has been developed, the basic principle of it has never been changed, which is the superposition of the light wave. When the turbines have the same frequency, same vibration direction, and constant initial phase difference, the light interference phenomenon will occur. So based on the fringes pattern obtained by the interferometer, there are plenty of physical quantities can be measured. Their surface irregularity would be one of the most common ones we could easily test. Let's observe the first figure. As we can see, the bending direction of fringes in x and y direction is different. So here, the irregularity is the sum of the number of fringes in x and y direction. But in the second figure, the bending direction of them is same this time. So here, the irregularity is the difference of their fringes number in x and y direction, respectively. Because our project focuses on the history of interferometry, we thought it would be cool to show a more modern use of an interferometer. And so we decided to use the XPZ interferometer to measure the surface quality of a glass lens. The XPZ is a Fizeau type interferometer, in which a reference and test surface are placed respectively along the propagation of coherent light. Light is emitted and reflects off of a partially reflective circular lens. This is our reference surface, which sends back circular wavefronts, and the partially reflective biconvex test lens. The returning superposition of waves forms a fringe pattern on an imaging plane, and from that pattern, the XPZ is able to electronically analyze it and determine the smoothness of the lens. The XPZ has an option to generate an image showing the surface quality of the tested optic. Smudges and dirt will appear red, and dips and crevices such as scratches will appear blue. As you can see from our first scan, there are obvious smudges, dirt, and some small scratches. But check this out. This is an image of our lens after cleaning it with isopropyl. It's certainly better, but even still you can see streak marks from the point the pressurized air blew dirt particles across the surface of the lens. Oops. Hey Dr. Wyatt, sign us off. Fringes are great.